Hi, my name is Mike Ladlund, and in this video I'm going to show you how a firm determines how many workers to hire. First of all, we had a simulation in which our groups cut out M's from pieces of paper. When I hired no labor, they produced no output. As I added more and more labor units to fixed resources, my total product went up. As you can see, it went up by a decreasing rate. So here's my data. The next step was to graph the production function. And you can see um, that it has the characteristics that it's increasing at a decreasing rate. I like to say that that hump right there represents the gains that come from specialization. Adding the first person produced four units, but adding the second unit really boosted productivity. Maybe one student folded <coughs> and another person colored and one person uh, might have folded and cut. But anyway, working together they were able to produce more than one person because they specialized. The characteristics of the production functions are as follows. The curve slopes upward and to the right, or in other words it increases at a decreasing rate. And the reason economists give for that are diminishing marginal if you teach macro, it's oftentimes um, a point right now to bring out that the curve also has constant returns to scale. So if I double the inputs, this curve would shift up and I would essentially double the output. The next step is to calculate the marginal product. You can see that I've done that here. In this slide, I've actually given you the math for that. I've taken the change in total product which is 6, divided by the change in the quantity of labor inputs, which was 1. So the marginal product of the first person, when I increased from 1 to 2, was 6. Now I also like to calculate the average product. The advanced placement uh, test sometimes has a question on this. So I simply took the total product, divided it by the quantity of labor. Thus 4 divided by 1 was 4. 10 divided by 2 was 5. The next step is to graph them. I have followed the, um, uh, the accepted uh, protocol of graphing the marginal uh, as the change between 0 and 1 or at the midpoint. You can see that when marginal product is increasing, it is pulling average product with it. But when marginal product is falling, it is also pulling down the average product. The average product um, is a calculation of productivity. It's actually the quantity divided by the labor units. So this, when they talk about productivity, economists are talking about the average product. But of course, in microeconomics, we use the marginal product to make decisions. And here, I have calculated the marginal revenue product. I've assumed a perfectly competitive market. So it was the firm as a price taker. I have simply multiplied the marginal product times the product price to come up with the marginal revenue product. In neoclassical economics, I want to hire uh, the factors for the amount that they're worth. So the marginal revenue product shows each worker's contribution to uh, total revenue or their marginal revenue. I've now calculated and graphed the marginal revenue product see that at first it increases and then it decreases. This part here uh, where it's increasing is increasing returns to scale. This shows diminishing marginal returns. If the firm is a factor price taker and they take a price of eight dollars, 